David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another video. Uh, I recently attended the Atlanta Pen Show, and rather than doing a standard show recap like I've done in the past, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Uh, I get lots of questions from folks about pen shows, so I thought it was time to do something that I'm calling Pen Show 101. Uh, what I'm going to do is talk about pen shows in general, uh, answer some of the questions I receive about shows, and provide some of my personal tips for what I feel you should do when you attend a show. Uh, in addition, I'm going to share some of the new discoveries I made at the Atlanta show and show off a number of things I acquired while at the event. Uh, to begin with, in the United States, there are currently 17 different annual pen shows around the country. The season begins with the Philadelphia show in January and concludes with the Columbus, Ohio show in early November. Uh, I'm also aware of a few shows outside of the U.S. Uh, there are shows in Singapore and Tokyo, uh, London, Toronto, Madrid, and a couple in Australia, Melbourne and Sydney. Uh, hopefully I didn't leave any out. I'll put a link in the notes below to the well-appointed desk website. Uh, there you'll find a comprehensive list with links to the websites for each individual show. Uh, in regard to show websites, some are better than others, but if you're planning to attend a show, it is worth it to check its site out for reasons I'll go into here in just a little bit. Uh, shows come in all different sizes. Some are larger, most are in the medium size range, and then there's a few shows which are larger. Uh, the largest for now being the DC Super Show. Uh, the number of days each show is held can vary, but most of the time it will be a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, typically, shows are held at hotels, uh, and there are a few uh, which are not, but most are. Uh, the hotels will usually have a discounted show rate. Uh, if you're traveling to a show, I would highly recommend making reservations a few months in advance. They often sell out, and staying on site is much more convenient than staying elsewhere. Uh, if possible, I strongly recommend attending on a Friday. Uh, shows will typically say that they're open to on Friday for traders and the weekend is open to the public. Uh, the daily uh, weekend rate is usually around $10 or so, but being a trader uh, means that either you're a vendor who has purchased a table or you pay the higher weekend trader rate, which is usually around $50 for the entire weekend. Uh, by paying the trader rate, most shows will let you in an hour early each weekend day as well, and I find that the, uh, the extra money is well worth it. Uh, at the Atlanta show, there's a, a real nice cookout held every year for the vendors and uh, trader pass holders and, as well. Um, it's one of the things I really look forward to each year. Uh, but attending on a Friday will pay some benefits. Um, it won't be as crowded as it will be on the weekend. Uh, there are certain tables which have a tendency to get heavy morning rushes. Uh, on Friday morning, I went to go say hi to Jonathan Brooks from the Carolina Pen Company, uh, and even though the show had just opened, uh, people were lined up three deep at his table. Uh, makers like Jonathan try to have as much inventory as possible, uh, but there are times when stuff blows out fast. Um, I was at a show with Jonathan a while back where he sold out of virtually everything he brought by early Saturday morning. Uh, there's also typically a morning rush at the Franklin Kristoff table as well. Uh, the main reason being is that they bring with them to shows a number of special editions and color prototypes that aren't available anywhere but shows. You can pick up a cool color variant on your favorite model that may or may not ever be widely available. Um, I picked up this blue model 66 uh, a couple years ago. Uh, I like this pen a lot. Um, it performs great and I like that it's unique and that there's not a lot of other ones out there, at least for now. Uh, make sure to plan ahead. Uh, I mentioned the show's websites earlier. Um, some of them will have a list of vendors in attendance, which is helpful. Um, they will also sometimes have a list of events and seminars as well. Uh, for example, uh, at Atlanta, there were some calligraphy workshops. Uh, we had that cookout I mentioned earlier, and there was a, a live taping of the Pen Attic podcast. Uh, in Raleigh, they have an auction every year that's a lot of fun. Uh, knowing which of these events you'd like to attend will help you plan out your time at the show. Um, I always make a to-do list when I attend a show. Uh, come up with you know, a plan of attack. Uh, I include things that I want to check out or things that I want to purchase uh, in companies or people that I want to learn more about. 
Um, going to a show can be a bit overwhelming. There's a lot of activity, and sometimes it may, might be tough to figure out where to even begin. And having that to-do list can help you kind of plan out your day and help you make sure that you don't forget to do something or uh, meet someone that you wanted to. Uh, and have a budget as well. Uh, having a number in your head of what you're willing to spend for the show helps maintain a little bit of self-discipline, which can be tough when there is a hundred tables of cool things just begging you to uh, make a dent in your wallet. Uh, I remember attending my first show, uh, which was the Triangle Show in Raleigh, and I remember it being intimidating and, and a bit overwhelming. Um, I've had someone tell me that they didn't feel qualified to go to a show because they only owned a few entry-level pens, and I let them know that that is far from the truth. Um, when I got over, once I got over my initial apprehensions, um, I found shows to be very welcoming. Uh, don't be ashamed of anything. There are attendees of every age group and every Every level of collecting and interests. If you want to get an interesting grind on your Twisby Eco, then go for it. Uh, better to experiment on a lesser expensive pen. Uh, a Nibmeister isn't going to judge you. Uh, shows are a great opportunity to meet face to face with folks in the pen world whom you have heard about or read their blogs or watched their videos or purchased from their website. Um, I would recommend getting there early on the day that you plan to attend. Um, once you arrive at the show, be prepared to stand in line to enter. Uh, at times, the lines can get a bit long. Uh, if you are looking to get work done on a pen or you need the services of a Nibmeister, I would strongly suggest getting on their list as early as possible. These vendors work on a first come, first serve basis and their queue can fill up rather quickly. Um, what you do is you put your name down on a list and you wait your turn. Uh, most of the time you can leave your cell number and they will uh, text you when it's your turn rather than having to continually check in at their table to see where you're at on the list. Uh, it's worth it though. Um, at the Atlanta show, I had Mark Backus uh, work on uh, the nib of my Mont Blanc 149 that had been giving me some issues. I don't mind tweaking a more inexpensive nib, but when it comes to my higher end pens, I like to leave it to the experts. I think I, I'm afraid that I'd mess up the nib beyond repair. Uh, Mike Matsuyama attends a large number of shows as, and is one of the best in the business. Um, it's cool to be able to sit right there and watch a master at what they do uh, perform their craft right in front of you. Uh, if you don't have something specific that you'd like to purchase that's time sensitive, then I would advise walking the floor to get the lay of the land. Uh, you want to explore. Uh, shows are a great way to find out about new pens and new companies that weren't previously on your radar. Uh, last uh, DC show, uh, I learned about the company called uh, Pen18111. It's a company that was brand new to me, and I'm really glad that I spent some time with Yoshi and his wife at their table. Uh, the pen I purchased from him at that show is one of my favorite in my entire collection. Uh, Penlux was another company that I learned about last year at DC. Um, a while back, I reviewed their metallic model and uh, was very impressed. Uh, as you're browsing around, don't be afraid to ask questions of anyone, and not just vendors. Uh, I know that you're, if you're introverted, then asking a stranger a question can be intimidating or uncomfortable, but do it. Uh, just about everyone at a show is willing to help you out, uh, even if they don't have anything to gain directly from you. If you're there on a Friday and it's a bit slower, then the vendor will most likely be a little bit more free to talk. Uh, that's another one of the good things about Fridays. You can spend a little bit more time with people. On Saturday, uh, there might be customers lined up at a table, you know, two and three deep, and the vendor won't have as much time to spend with you as they did the previous day. Uh, typically, Saturdays are the busiest day uh, at the show, and then on Sunday, it might be busy in the morning, but then it has a tendency to slow down a bit in the afternoon as the show winds down. Uh, I've had people ask me if it's acceptable to haggle at a pen show. Uh, absolutely, yes. Now, there might be certain brands or pens, uh, typically new stock, where vendors are contractually obligated to sell at specific prices and they can't offer a discount. But in my experience, uh, no one's going to be offended if you make them a reasonable offer. Um, if you've been eyeing something all weekend, Sunday afternoon is a good time to make an offer to a vendor. Who knows, they might be willing to negotiate a bit uh, so that it's one less piece of inventory they need to pack up and uh, take home with them. 
while you're walking around checking out tables, um, it's proper etiquette to, uh, to ask before you take a pen off the table. Uh, and when you remove the cap of a pen that you're unfamiliar with, it's a good habit to always twist before pulling. Always assume a pen twists uh, to, when you cap it. Uh, the one thing I love about shows is the ability to interact directly with people, uh, especially smaller companies where it might be a one or two person operation. Uh, it's one thing to purchase a pen from a craftsman site, uh, but it's meaningful on another, another level to meet that artisan and purchase from them directly. Um, it gives you a stronger connection to that pen. It's not just that pen that I bought from Ryan Krusak online, uh, it's the one I scoped out on his table and purchased directly from him. And then he let me know specifics and details about the pen and the material that I wouldn't have known about otherwise. It makes it that much more special. Um, I find it's important to take breaks through the day. Take your time to breathe. Um, shows can be overwhelming and tiring. Uh, you might want to find a good place in the lobby or the bar to take a break and uh, chill for a couple of times during the day. Uh, that's one good thing about staying at the hotel. You always have your room to go back to if you need to take a break. Uh, speaking of hanging out, one of my favorite parts of any pen show is affectionately called Pen Show After Dark. After the show each day and after folks have gotten a bite to eat somewhere, then there's typically a large group of attendees hanging out at the bar area. Uh, there's a lot of sharing of purchases as well as sharing of pens that folks had just brought with them to the show. Uh, chances are you could find people who would be willing to let you try out pens that you've been eyeing uh, or even test out uh, pens that you might never purchase on your own. Uh, if you wanted to test out a Nakaya, chances are someone at the bar will have one and will let you write with it and test it out. Um, at this most recent show in Atlanta on Saturday night, we stayed so late in the bar that they actually turned out the lights on us and kicked us out into kind of an area right outside the bar. And then a while after that, they kicked us out of that area and into the lobby. Uh, no one is really unruly or rowdy and, rowdy, and it's a, a pretty good time. Uh, it's a great time to reconnect with old friends and make new ones. Uh, and in the end, uh, the things I enjoy most about shows nowadays are the people and the connections that I make. Uh, at Atlanta, there were a couple of new friends that I made, and by the end of the weekend, I really felt like I had known them for years. Uh, you can go a long time without running into a fountain pen person out in the wild, so it's fun to meet people and spend a weekend with folks who all have a common interest. Okay. I wanted to show you a couple of things and I wanted to share some of the supplies that I bring to shows with me. And I wanted to show you some of the things that I purchased in the Atlanta show. So in order to do that, please join me over here at camera two. Okay, in regard to supplies, uh, I typically bring with me a medium sized backpack. Uh, you don't want something too huge because aisles at shows have a tendency to be a bit narrow and you don't want to wear something that would make it difficult for folks to get around you. But having a backpack is helpful, especially to store your purchases. Uh, this way you aren't having to carry a bag or a box or anything around in your hand. Uh, if I did that, there'd be a strong probability that I would set something down somewhere and forget about it. So I use my backpack. And what do I carry in my backpack? Um, first of all, I bring some cash uh, that I've heard of many instances where the hotel ATM can run out of money. If you plan to purchase with cash, you might not want to rely on the hotel ATM. Also, sometimes vendors will give you a better deal if you pay with cash, since it avoids them having to pay it with any uh, credit card fees. Um, I always bring some water with me as well as uh, a snack because it seems like uh, when you're walking around a show sometimes you could actually forget to drink and forget to eat uh, and sometimes it's helpful if you can't get away from the, the floor just to have something in your backpack to catch a, uh, a, a quick snack. Um, also, I think it's helpful to bring your own notebook with you. I usually bring like a field notes or one of these story supply notebooks, uh, something that you're familiar with the paper and you understand how it reacts. So if you have to test out a pen, then you can, uh, then you can do it on some a paper that you're familiar with. Um, I will also bring a loop um, that this is just a nice loop so that I could take a close up look at something if need be. This is one that is nice and compact. Um, I also bring 
a some spare vials as well as a syringe uh, in case someone has some ink that they're wanting to let you uh, test out and uh, sample. Uh, and in regard to ink samples, uh, I actually would suggest bringing an ink sample, something that you're familiar with, so that uh, if you uh, purchased a pen and you wanted to ink it up with something right away, if you didn't purchase any ink, then you have something to use. Uh, you might want to also bring an empty pen. If you bring an empty pen, if uh, you wanted to test out an ink, then you have something to put it in. Uh, and then also uh, some tissues, uh, because if you ink something up, then it's helpful to have some tissues there to, uh, to clean off the nib. So you have all the supplies that you need. Okay, so now I wanted to show you some of the things that I picked up at the Atlanta show. To begin with, I received a couple of pens for review, which will be featured in the upcoming months. Um, I received this Conklin Mark Twain. This is a crescent filler. Um, I also received a, a clear demonstrator model of this particular pen, so I'll be taking a look at that one coming up. And then I have this new pen, which was a company that I wasn't familiar with, uh, which is a company from India called Constellation, and this is called the Plasma Demonstrator. Uh, and so this is another pen that I'll be looking at coming up here in the near future. I found something really interesting at Van Ness Pens. Uh, this is a sample of a new product from Van Ness called White Lightning. Here's what the bottle looks like. Uh, what it does is add some viscosity to your ink. Uh, it helps make ink less dry and also helps bring back older ink to life that has evaporated a little bit. Um, it's not going to affect the color of the ink and won't affect permanence. Uh, and it also doesn't contain any water. Um, the bottle actually comes with an eyedropper and you add one drop for each 10 to 12 milliliters of ink. Um, it works really well with uh, any of the uh, inks that are really dry. Some things like the, the Kyo no Noto line uh, and the uh, Organic Studios Sheeny inks are well known for being rather dry. Same goes for uh, some of the KWZ Iron Gall uh, or even some of the Pelican 4001 inks. Um, I did a little experiment here with some of the Kyo no Oto ink. Um, this is what the ink looks like. And this is what the experiment that I did. And what I used was I used this Lamy All-Star, which has a fine nib, which has always been a little bit dry for me. Uh, and so what I did was, first of all, I used the normal ink here. And you can see that normally, uh, pretty much it dried within five seconds. And there really wasn't much in this smear here. And then after adding a few drops to a sample, you can see that it uh, had a significant, it was significantly wetter for the smear, and it took a, just a little bit over 10 seconds for it to dry as opposed to the five. Um, so I think that this product works really well, and it's available from the Van S website. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. In regard to some of the other things I picked up, I did pick up one of the 100th Anniversary Limited Edition colors from Pilot on their Orochizuku line, uh, and it is the Bisha Monten. I'm probably butchering that, but that is the, uh, the name of this particular color. It's kind of a darker red, almost maroon type color, and it's something that I enjoy. Um, I also picked up some uh, wax, some uh, wax from Papier Plume. Um, I've actually placed an order for a custom wax seal with them. And once I receive that, I might just do a, a video on wax seals. And then finally, I have three pens that I picked up for myself. First off, we have a pen from Leonardo that is called, uh, let's see, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. It's spelled F-U-R-O-R-E, Fiore. Uh, and this is the Blue Galaxy model. Um, I really like the looks of this. There's a few Leonardo models out there that I think are pretty keen looking, and this is definitely one of them. So uh, look for a review of that coming out in the somewhat near future. Next up, is a custom pen that I picked up from Jonathan Brooks. Just check out this material. Um, the brilliance of this blue is just amazing, especially in contrast to the copper brown. Uh, I think it is just simply stunning. 
Uh, there's a story of how this pen came to be, and I will share that at a later point in time. But yeah, I am really loving this material. And then finally, something that I really hadn't intended to purchase, but I ended up picking one up, and that is the Sailor King of Pen in Royal Tangerine. Um, that I really like each of my Sailor King of Pen models and was looking forward to checking out this one at the show in person. Um, I almost pulled the trigger on a 1911 large of this color when it was first released a while back, but I resisted. Uh, when I tested out the King of Pen in person, I knew it was something I had to just pick up. Um, I think this color really pops. And the Sailor King of Pen nib is one of my uh, favorite nibs uh, that I have in my collection. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit about pen shows. If you have any other pen show tips you'd like to pass along to others, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.